Hey y'all, this lesson is for solving linear inequalities and also graphing linear inequalities in one variable. Before we get into solving linear inequalities and looking at those, I want to remind you of interval notation. So we know that in set builder notation we have, or inequalities, we have uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, and then we have less than or greater than. And so just to remind you for interval notation, when we have the equal to sign, we're going to be using brackets. And when we have the just less than or greater than no equal to, we use the parentheses. You might also see an open circle and a closed circle for those on a graph, depending on your book or your homework system. So let's draw the graph of, a, of X is less than or equal to negative one on a number line. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna put a couple numbers on here, negative two, negative one, zero, one, just to kind of give a frame of reference. And then at negative one, I'm going to put, you can put a closed circle since it's less than or equal to, or you can use the bracket or parentheses. In this case, we're going to use a bracket. And the direction of it does matter because it's going to point in the direction where the arrow is going to be shaded. So since this is less than or equal to, my shading is gonna be on the left side. These numbers are less than or equal to negative one. And then if I were to write that in interval notation, that would be negative infinity to negative one with a bracket on the negative one. Infinity always has a parentheses because infinity is not a number. It's a concept and you can't equal it. So we use a parentheses. And then the next one, we have a number line. Whoops, forgot to use my straight tool. That's better. And we're going from negative four. I'm gonna put a couple numbers on here. From negative four to two, where negative four is not equal to, but two is. So you see I put a parentheses on the negative four and a bracket on the two to show those signs. You might also see an open circle on negative four and a closed circle on two. And then the shading is in between because X is in between those values. And then for interval notation, we do parentheses negative four to two bracket. So we're gonna definitely use that when we solve inequalities. Another thing we need to look at before we get into solving, we solve linear inequalities the same exact way we solve equations. The only difference is instead of an equal sign, we have an inequality sign. And we already looked at the four inequality signs in the table above, so you've already seen them. And also one of the other biggest differences is that when you multiply or divide by a negative number, it, negative, sorry, causes the inequality sign to flip. And I'll show you why in a second. If I have an inequality, a true statement, negative three is less than three, that's true. A negative number is smaller than a positive number. If I divide both sides by a negative, we'll just say negative one, and I'll keep it pink. Divide this side and divide that side, keep it balanced. Then if I were to simplify that, I now have three is less than negative three. That's not true. Whenever you multiply by a negative, it negates the statement, which means that we need to flip the sign for it to remain true. And so anytime in an inequality, if you divide or multiply by a negative, remember to flip that sign because you've negated the whole statement. It's kind of like a mirror image. We're doing a mirror image, which means that the sign goes with it. So here's an example, a couple examples down here. We want to solve first, then graph. So we're just gonna kind of pretend that this is an equal sign as we solve, which means that we're gonna subtract 11 first. 
and then divide by positive five. And since it's positive, I don't need to negate anything. The only time you're gonna be switching stuff is if it's negative. So then I graph less than or equal to negative three, not negative three, sorry, positive three. I've already kind of sketched a number line. So if you need to pause it and sketch your own number line, you can. I'm gonna put a bracket on three, less than goes that way. And then if I were to write that in interval notation that goes from negative infinity to three. And that's all, it's all at once. And then the next one beside it, if you wanna pause it and try it yourself, please do that. If you tried it on your own, you should get eight X is greater than 16 divide by eight. So we get X is greater than two, which means we have a parentheses on two greater than goes that way. And then interval notation would be two to infinity with a parentheses on two. And generally speaking, not always, because it depends on where the variable is, but the direction that this is pointing is the direction that this is pointing. But again, be careful with that because if X is on the other side, if it had been written this way, then you gotta be careful. That's only, it only works, that little memory device only works as a if X is on the left side. So I'm always hesitant to share that because it doesn't always work, but for the most part, it's good. So just be careful. This is, if we read it backwards, this is X is greater than two, which is like kind of confusing. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> okay, number three, we have what's called a, a compound inequality. Compound inequality means that it has two parts. And basically you're, basically you're going to solve the two parts separately and then graph them on the same number line. So the left side is kind of long, but it's really not that hard. What we're going to do is distribute that four first. And then we're gonna simplify the left side because we have like terms. And then we can solve. If I subtract six from both sides, they add to zero. And this is kind of weird. Uh, sometimes I see that they say no solution, but technically I could plug in zero and it would be true. So I don't know why some books say that because zero works for this. Uh, what I do is I go ahead and solve it and we get X is greater than or equal to zero. So um, I'm trying to remember, sometimes when it's an equal sign, I'm trying to remember when it comes up, I've seen it in some books, it'll say no solution. I never understand that. If it's an equal sign, it can even be, if as long as X is zero, it's true. So anyway, um, this is the right answer. X is greater than or equal to zero. Basically this is saying, and I'll show you, that as long as X is, greater than or equal to zero, those values satisfy this inequality. So if we plug in one, then we're saying four is greater than or equal to three, which is true. If we plug in two, then we're saying eight is greater than or equal to six, which is true. Um, three, four, five, any of the X values on this side of the graph, including zero, are going to be true for this statement. But now we need to solve the other side. And we divide by negative nine. And remember, when we divide by a negative, we've got to flip this sign. So as soon as you see that you're dividing by a negative, you might put some sort of reminder there for you to flip the inequality. So now I'm going to graph that on the same number line. <clears throat> we've got a parentheses on four and we're pointing to less than. So we're saying when a compound, when we have a compound inequality, we're saying that these solutions or these solutions satisfy either one of these uh, inequalities. And when we write our answer, we're gonna write it in interval notation, negative infinity to negative four union zero to infinity. And that union means or, which means these solutions fit in either one or the other inequalities. 
So this means or, which means either one. The next one is also a compound inequality. This is an example of an intersection, uh, which is associated with the word and. So we're still going to graph these solutions on the same number line. And this, the words I'm saying here with union and or and intersection and and, this is all going to make sense if you watch my absolute value inequality video, which is after this one. Uh, so this is basically two different problems. This side represents one problem and this side represents the other problem. But what you wanna do is, I like these because you can, you start in the middle and in the middle you're trying to isolate X. So that means that we need to add one but where we add it in the middle, we also need to, add, need to add it on both sides. So it goes over here and over here. We have negative 10 is less than 2x, less than or equal to negative 4. And we still need to isolate x, so now we're going to divide everything by 2. And we get negative 5 is less than x, is less than or equal to negative 2. And that we can graph on the number line pretty easily. We have a parentheses on negative five, a bracket on negative two, and X is in between those two values. And we write that just like it looks on the graph in interval notation. So what this is saying is that anything in between negative five and two, including two, will satisfy this statement. So if I plug in, uh, negative four, then this will be a true statement. If I plug in negative three, this will be a true statement. Negative two, it'll be a true statement. If I plug in negative five, let's just, let's just look at it. Plug in negative five to the original problem times negative five minus one less than or equal to negative five. Simplify the middle negative 10 minus one. Here's the problem. This is why it's a parentheses. When I plugged in negative five, is negative 11 less than negative 11? No, it's equal. And so that's what makes it false. And that's why we have a parentheses on negative five because we can go up really, 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 really close to negative five like negative 4.9 is fair game, but not equal to negative five because that makes it a false statement. Now, if we had plugged in a negative two instead, then it would satisfy this statement and it would be true. And that's why we have a bracket on it. So that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be happy to help.